thrusters have been re-enabled. Uh, we will control our attitude on shoot. We are decelerating. In the year 2022, four astronauts will leave Earth for a seven-month journey to Mars. It is the first uh, privately funded planetary exploration mission. The search has begun for volunteers for a mission to fly to Mars. And this is the craziest shit I've heard today. The opportunity to travel to Mars is a once-in-a-lifetime offer. Literally. If we do send people there in our lifetime, those guys are not coming back. Are you willing to take the risk to leave everything behind to be one of the first four Mars astronauts? They will either die on the way or they will die on Mars, hopefully of old age. Uh, space missions always include risk and uh, this mission will not be different. When you send humans to Mars, there will be risks. But we will select the people and we will tell those people the risks. They will understand the risks and they will have to weigh the risks. I want to go to Mars because I have a sense of adventure. I believe in saying why not instead of why. I know that no matter what situation I'm thrust into, that I will be able to make decisions or follow orders as necessary, um, that I can act, that I'm capable. Uh, my greatest trait is my resiliency. My name is Trish Woodford. I am 30 years old and I am a prosecutor for the city of Toronto. Yeah, I do like to spend time alone. Um, I like uh, even just getting out and uh, running errands and doing things uh, out amongst people, but uh, by myself uh, gives me a chance to, you know, think. I have been married. Um, I got married young when I was 22 in university, and I was married for six years, and uh, my ex and I separated last year. It's been difficult and emotional, obviously. Uh, you spend that much time of your life with someone, it's going to be difficult to separate your lives. So, something I have thought about and considered uh, in going to Mars would be uh, giving up uh, the opportunity for a relationship here on Earth that I could fall in love and uh, have uh, a wonderful person in my life and then be faced with leaving them behind and that would be very difficult. If you're selected for the mission you're going to spend seven years in training with three other people um, so you're going to become very close with these people. Um, they're going to be your new family. I don't have children, not planning on having children. I don't think uh, going to Mars will change that for me. I've been through a huge physical transformation over the past couple of years. Just over two years ago, I was double the size I am now. I have literally lost half my body weight and my life is completely different. I have now um, the opportunity to go to Mars because all of these health problems have been resolved. I was asked to be interviewed by my hometown newspaper, The Guardian, in Charlottetown, Prince Edward Island. Um, after the article was published, a, uh, a local man in Charlottetown wrote a letter to the editor calling me a nut job. He was rather derogatory. He thought that the entire Mars One mission was just uh, insane and ridiculous and that anybody who was signing up for it should get a life. It's hope. It's curiosity, it's adventure, that these are things worth pursuing <laughs> and caring about and that people should dream and think big and take risks and to not be afraid to uh, do things that other people might think are crazy or out of the box or they might judge you for. Space is my dream, and as my past demonstrates, I live my dreams. Apart from being in excellent health, I'm no stranger to isolation. I'm a highly experienced voyager who has survived extremes of nature, from the cold of Antarctica to the heat of the Sahara. As a rescue diver, I've explored the ocean depths as well. 
My constitution has been steeled by this. I've seen the planet Earth. It's time to move on. My name's uh, Steve Fennick. I'm 46 now, I just turned. And uh, well, I've been in the television industry since I was knee high to a grasshopper. I remember uh, not even before I could walk, my dad having a TV show and being there and being on set. Um, my dad is my own personal hero. He is, I mean, he's probably the most selfless individual uh, I know. If I'm going to have any regrets about going to Mars is the fact that, you know, I would not be uh, succeeded. Um, you know, someone to carry on my torch. Have I ever been married? <laughs> no, but I've been down that avenue twice. I, uh, I was engaged twice, once to a Swedish girl and once to a Turkish girl, and it didn't work out. So uh, I was, and I think if I did go down that avenue and I was successful, um, that uh, this wouldn't be a consideration, you know, this whole Mars thing. Had we been married and let's say had a, a couple of kids or something, then life would have been just so complicated and there'd been so much angst and regret, you know. I think people really um, suffer a lot from loneliness. Um, and uh, it comes to that whole thing almost like from the Celestian prophecy where, you know, you have two, two people moving through life as kind of half circles and they need the other to complete that circle. Um, I've kind of gone beyond that because I'm my own full circle. I love living alone because if I get home at two in the morning and I feel like playing the guitar and having a drink then there's no one to tell me you can't do that. Well, back in 86, I was down in Florida with my parents, and uh, we were at Walt Disney World, but over at Cape Canaveral, the, the space shuttle was going up, and I saw the, uh, the plume of smoke as it was going up, and thinking, wow, I'm actually witnessing a, a space shuttle launch, and then something very bizarre happened. It, uh, it just stopped. The launch seemed to go all right, but a minute and 12 seconds into the launch, something went wrong, and the report is that the vehicle Exploded. I was like, oh my god, I just witnessed that. Not just witnessed it, but I, I actually took a photo of it at that precise moment. Um, that was very unnerving. Well, I've always had a childhood dream about uh, getting up there, leaving the planet. And uh, in the interim, since I've seen at this point about three quarters of the planet, um, I just thought it would be the next natural step. I'll be gone for a month. Well, I'm going to die eventually, but, you know, like it's the same thing. I'd rather be ashes than dust, you know. So I may die in the first day I arrive there. I may die en route. I may die on the launch pad. But, I mean, even if I don't go, then, you know, I may discover I have cancer or something, you know, that's something boring. <laughs> the way I see it, if you don't do something like that, you don't live, you know, kind of outside of the box and get out of your comfort zone, then life is just a bunch of Tuesdays strung together, you know. So I, I like to, like to uh, kind of up the ante and have something memorable. You know, there's always a risk factor, and I've been in a lot of hairy situations as a result, but what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. So why do I want to go to Mars? I think this mission is going to set out with one set of goals and bam, that's completely going to change and we're going to find something new and off the map and just, I want to be there when that exploration goes down. Why am I the perfect candidate? Whereas the rest of the world's like, oh my God, it's a one-way ticket. I see it as exhilarating and being able to find some closure in the sky while changing the face of humanity forever is a powerful and a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. So that's it. Thanks, guys. My name is Madison Brado. I'm 28 years old and I'm a barista and a student at Humber College. I grew up in Oakville, Ontario. Uh, I had my mom, my dad, and my sister. We moved there when I was three and it was a wonderful childhood. We lived in this beautiful neighborhood. And my mom would come home and we'd always make dinner. And yeah, it was just, 
it was a beautiful childhood. In the last 18 months, the biggest lesson I've learned so far is never take anything for granted. You know, cherish every relationship you've ever had. Don't don't go a day, like don't go to bed angry and don't let a day go by without saying you love, like telling someone you love them. You know, you never really know when the last time will be. Uh, my sister was really sick since, you know, as long as I can remember. She developed anorexia when she was 12, uh, shortly after my parents split. And from there stemmed a whole bunch of medical issues. Um, the last day of her life, she came to Toronto and she got all dressed up and, you know, she came down here and she was going to spend the night and go out with, like, me, like, big night in Toronto. And we did, and it was wonderful, and I should have known something was up then. She's like, can you take a picture of me? And I was like, okay. And so I got up and I took pictures of her around my dad's backyard, and they ended up being the last photographs I'd ever, ever taken of her was by me, and we drove her home that evening and she passed away. And it was just all the medical issues on top of everything. She just kind of, kind of wasted away, and... I still miss her every day. I was actually at Starbucks on my break and one of my friends had posted about Mars on Facebook and by the time I got back from break I was like that's what I want to do and I told my entire staff and they all thought it was crazy. They're like what are you talking about? That's not real. I will miss uh, the daily interactions. I love looking around like when I'm in the subway and just being like wow like you know, each of us probably got up at a different time and, you know, we did X, Y, Z throughout the day, but we all managed to be on this subway together and I've never seen any of these people before and I'll probably never see any of them again and you just kind of like cherish that moment that wherever their life had taken them, you all ended up here, whether it's like the subway, the elevator, walking down the street. And I will miss just like randomly chatting with strangers or with my customers at Starbucks, just, you know, hearing about their day and like them genuinely asking about mine. Yeah, I'll definitely miss that. <laughs> when the Globe and Mail article came out uh, online, there was so many comments about uh, myself and the other eight that were featured in the article, saying, you know, you know, Madison wants to go because you know she's sad about her sister. Or they can get quite nasty, but at the end of the day, you have to let them go. I know why I'm going. I don't really need to prove to anyone else. Most people need to see to believe. So when that rocket's going up and you know this is, you know, getting off the ground and it's actually happening, I think a lot of those non-believers will hopefully put down their criticism and be like, "Wow, this is actually going to cha change the face of our world forever." I think if I was 20 years younger, I wouldn't go. I wouldn't even consider it because it'd be too much that. I I would not have seen on this planet, but I've I've been there, I've done that. Why do it again? You know, do something different, right? And this is really out there, this is really different. This is something that's never been done before. I think, uh, I think I would find uh, companionship uh, in the other candidates who, if they're selected to go because you got to figure um, it's going to attract a certain persona but I think everyone's got that ultimate goal of, of, of we we're going to do this this is this is something uh, you know for the for the whole planet so we have to work together hi guys hi hey. Madison Trish nice, nice to, to meet, meet you. you I'm Steven nice to meet you welcome hi. to the club thanks <laughs> hi so awesome. let's do this. Wow, yeah. Yes. Time to rock and roll. Planetary exploration mission. The search has begun 
for volunteers for a mission to fly to Mars. This is the craziest shit I've heard today. The opportunity to travel to Mars is a once in a lifetime offer, literally. To leave everything behind, to leave everything behind, to be one of the first four Mars astronauts. If I'm gonna relate it into one tangible fear that I have, it's not so much dying, I think it's just dealing with motion sickness. The part that most scares me about Mars is probably the risk factors, like the radiation poisoning, um, even getting there, uh, surviving the, the long trip to get to Mars. I think the natural thing people think they'll worry about is that the, that tragedy will happen, that we'll end up you know, dying en route. Uh, that's not what scares me or worries me, it's, it's that it might not happen. To leave everything behind, to be one of the first... Mars One says anyone can apply, and apparently 10,000 people from 100 countries. Uh, this mission will not be different. When you send humans to Mars, there will be risks. But we will select the people and we will tell those people the risks, they will understand the risks and they will have to weigh the risks.